back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in today. So, if you have been following me on social media or on Instagram, um, you may have recently noticed that I'm on this new quest to fix my mindset. So, um, I kind of just got to the point where, like, my body dysmorphia and, like, my body image and my relationship with food and, like, just the way I was acting about, like, getting anxiety when I wasn't productive or getting enough done or whatever it was, was just getting out of hand. Like, it was just messing with my mental space and it was, like, causing me, like, to, like, gain weight and have setbacks and have just such a negative negative relationship with food. It was, like, causing problems in my relationship because I was always so stressed about, like, not working enough and whatever else. So, long story short, I'm on a mission to take my life back, to reset, to fix my mindset, and then hit the ground running as fast as I can once, you know, everything is done and ready. I am a hard-working person and a dedicated person through and through, so I'm not going to change the fact that I work really hard I just kind of needed to like take a step back and not work less but just fix my mind around the working and not eat worse or whatever it was just fix my mindset around food it's not that I technically need to change my body drastically I just need to fix how I think about it and all of that so I have come to realize that there are a lot of you that are in a similar situation so I kind of wanted to document my journey um, if you guys have followed me since like I shouldn't say the way beginning because I think I kind of adopted this phrase about two years ago. Um, I used the hashtag still not done a lot before I started Wayland Apparel. I sold merch and it had still not done on it. And that's kind of been like my like phrase. If you go to my website, BriannaHenryFitness.com, you'll see I have like a little story about that on there. And basically it's just like the whole concept and idea that there's always room for improvement. You can always get better. You can always be faster, stronger, healthier leaner if you want to be leaner um have more money be kinder be more generous be more loving be more fun travel more like there's always more that you can do to be a better person so hashtag still not done there's more to be done there's more work to be put in and there's more fun to be had there's more there's an abundance of all the things that you want in life and it's up to you to put yourself in the situation to either create those things or obtain those things or experience them or whatever it is. So that's my spiel and um, I'm starting a series. This is the Still Not Done series, okay? Episode one. So I thought that in order to make all of this make sense, I needed to start back at the beginning and tell you guys about my fitness journey, how I got to where I am, how I got to this low point that now I'm trying to build back up from the ground up. Okay, so I am 27 years old. Um, I'm from Pennsylvania. I was um, raised in a family with uh, two brothers uh, where my parents, uh, mainly my dad, put like a huge emphasis on sports um, or you know whatever your activity was. We were all super athletic. My dad and myself and my little brother are super competitive. I definitely get that from my dad. Um, so, like, all of us, it was always, like, be the best. Like, there, there was no, like, you're just good. Like, we were always trying, to, striving to be the best on the team, the best in town, whatever it was. We were just always super competitive with whatever we were doing. So I've always been an active child. Um, I did, when I was really little, I did, like, soccer. I did softball. Uh, never did basketball. That wasn't me. Um, in my, I come from a small town. We don't have like lacrosse or field hockey or any of that. But so when I was, I think at the end of, I think at the end of third grade, or either second or third grade were the tryouts for elementary cheerleading. So that's where it all started. I got into elementary cheerleading and then competitive. And then by the time I got to middle school or around there, I started also doing all stars. So I was cheering for my team and um, all stars. And all through middle school, I was doing two teams. And then into my first year of high school, I was doing two cheerleading squads and I played volleyball and I had a job. Um, I've always been a super busy person. And then Starting my sophomore year, I just did high school cheerleading. I wanted to focus on that. That was like where my heart la uh, laid. That was where my heart was. Um, and I actually did swimming as a joke with my friend. Um, oh, and I did track all four years of high school, um, which I really liked. 
but it was more of like a joke for me. I was like really good at it. I was I'm like naturally fast, but I didn't have the discipline to get conditioned. So that was that. Um, yeah, so I've just always been super active into college. My first two years I cheered. And then once I transferred to Penn State, I decided I didn't want to cheer anymore. Um, I wanted to, but like it was like more of a thing since Penn State was like a legit school. Um, and also it was like hard for me to get to the tryouts because of how my schedule was and then I was in the military and all this stuff. Um, but so... It just like didn't really fall in place for me to do cheerleading and I kind of just decided like I was finally at a big school I wanted to do the things like go tailgate at the football games and all of that so it didn't cheer there um and when I transferred there I went to school at Penn State for one semester and then I left for basic training for the military um in between all that time when I was home I would work out with my dad at the YMCA he would show me how to lift we mainly just like bench pressed and like did easy bar curls because that was like I don't know he had like such an old school like gym mentality like barely trained legs he owns a landscaping company so he's always outside like wheeling mulch and whatever else so he was like always working that was his leg workout um so just always like benching and curling and stuff like that with him but I didn't have like any formal fitness routine so left for the military was forced to do push-ups and sit-ups and run and there was nothing else to do in our spare time but work out sometimes so um, I kind of started getting to the point where I like felt really empowered that I was getting stronger I was doing more push-ups than a lot of the guys it was really cool for me my competitive mindset set in I wanted to get the 300 on the PT test so that kind of all happened um, and whenever I got back from basic training in my job training AIT I was just like I'm gonna be a fit bitch that's like what happened. I was like, I want to be strong. This is cool. I want to get muscle. And that was like kind of like when all the people like Buff Bunny and Buff Bunny, I was just obsessed with her. That's when like all of that was coming up where it was like cool to start lifting weights. This was in, oh God, what year is that? I don't know, like six years ago, because that's like when I joined the military. So about six years ago. Um. So yeah, that's how I was like, I'm gonna lift weights, I'm gonna get into this more, and I didn't have children anymore, and I was like, how am I gonna, like, knock it fat, because I still wanted to party and drink and everything, I wasn't gonna give that up, so, I was like, how do I get into this more, um, so my really good friend from high school, her boyfriend was a personal trainer, so whenever I was at home over the summer, um, I worked out with the two of them, and once I got back to college, he wrote me a program, and I did the same program for, like, months, I was, like, addicted, then I got a job at the gym swiping cards for fitness classes, so I was taking fitness classes for cardio, I was getting all my steps in, I started eating healthier, and it just, I started seeing results and it just became an obsession. So I loved it from the get-go, it was like such a passion of mine. I wasn't tracking macros, other than like that one program I was doing, it was nothing like super regimented, like I was like writing in my notebook sometimes, like what I was lifting, but it was just so exciting to see myself get stronger, be able to lift more weights, be able to learn new exercises, I was learning different things that I could do in the gym. I was gung-ho, all in, I was loving it. So, um, throughout college, I ate pretty healthy. I ate healthier as it went on. I, I like have always, I guess I should say I always had body image issues. I always was obsessed with how I looked. Um, I get that from my dad as well. Appearance was always like a huge thing to me. Um, I wanted to be skinnier, prettier, fitter, whatever it was, a bigger butt, like whatever. I was always obsessed with the fact that I wanted boobs, bought some eventually. Um, but so, like, that's just always been a big thing. And unfortunately, I've always been super self-conscious. This one kid in high school told me I was a butterface. If you don't know what that was, everything's attractive but her face. That uh, hit home, obviously, because I remember it. Um, just, like, random things throughout life. Like, I, like, recall being just, like, so obsessed with, like, not feeling pretty enough or skinny enough or whatever it was. So it was always kind of there. Um, but whenever I first got on my fitness journey, everything was fun. There was times whenever I would become obsessed and kind of pick myself apart in the mirror. I'd try fat burners whenever I didn't even have enough fat on me. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just kind of experimenting, trying to figure out, like, listening to what my friends were doing, whatever else. Like, so that was kind of all trial, trial and error. I didn't really realize that I didn't need fat burners, uh, things like that. So it was just a really big learning process, and the first few years were so fun. Graduated college, uh, got certified as a personal trainer, and... From then on, I just was learning more, learning more in the gym, still addicted, still eating healthy. And then I decided to compete in my first bodybuilding competition. 
Uh, during it, everything was super fine. Aside from the fact that I was on a meal plan, um, and I didn't have a lot of food variants, I would say for the most part it was pretty healthy. Like, I was never starving. So, as far as, like, that goes, um, my coach never had me starve. But I think that my, like, restrictive mindset definitely got fucked up there. Um, because I was restricting so much, I would be so tempted to start binging after a while, and, like, there would be, like, I was, uh, I was, like, emotionally, like, devastated the one time because we did check-ins and he said I couldn't have a cheat that week, and I was like, I can't survive, like, I need the cheat, like, let's do pictures again, let me show you, like, I made progress, like, I need this cheat, and so then I, and then I remember another instance, I was allowed to have Froyo with sprinkles, so I went to this place and I bought Froyo with sprinkles, and then I left there, went to the grocery store, bought an entire carton of Froyo, fat free Cool Whip, and an entire tub of sprinkles, and ate that all within two days while on prep. And, like, just little things like that. Like, I would just, like, binge, and it started to get crazy. And then, and, like, I would, like, fight with my boyfriend because he, like, wouldn't give me a bite of his sub, like, chicken parm sub. I was like, give me a fucking bite. He was like, you're not allowed. I was like, ugh. So it was, like, mental and stressful. Anybody who's competed probably knows what I'm talking about. Um... But we didn't do macros, and I think that could have helped some of the cravings. Um, fast forward, I compete. I reverse decently. I honestly didn't even, like, follow the reverse like my coach wanted me to. I ate as much meal prep as I humanly could, and then whenever I needed to fuck up and have my cupcake or whatever it was, I did it. Started enjoying myself quick. The weight didn't come on that fast because I still kept up with some of the cardio, blah, blah, blah. Over time, the weight came back body image just kept plummeting um and then from there until now it's just been basically a roller coaster where body image is great I feel good about myself I'm in my routine I'm not being crazy about my food I'm like loving my workout and then all of a sudden it's like the polar opposite and I think I'm fat and I'm ugly and it affects my mood and I'm like being psycho about how much cardio I'm doing and I'm stressing about what my split should be and I'm tracking but then I'm like restricting too much so I end up binging later and whatever else and like it never turned into like an eating disorder in the sense where I was throwing up I wasn't starving myself but it was just this really unhealthy obsession and all of that so it's basically just been a roller coaster for the past what I computed three years ago it's been like a roller coaster since then but even before that it was like I get competitive and I can get obsessive sometimes and that's who I am and that's a trait that I have and it goes also into, like I was saying, with like trying to be work a hardworking person. I feel like I'm not doing enough. I could be doing more. I could be making more money. I have more projects, more like tasks to get done. There's always something you could be doing to better yourself. Um, so I've just become obsessed with all of it. And it's just getting to the point where like, I'm going to lose my damn mind if I don't do anything about it. So, like I said, I've been doing a few things. Sorry, I'm like swiveling can't help it. Doing a few things to work on all of this and I'm going to be documenting that as we go along and show you guys the new practices and the new habits that I'm trying to form and put into place to just fix things, to fall in love with it again, to go back to how it was when I first started lifting, like getting so excited to go to the gym just because I loved feeling stronger, just doing a workout that's fun just because I want to like enjoy myself and jump around. Like I love doing athletic movements, but Whenever I, like, tell myself, you have to go to the gym this day and do this, like, it just became too much mentally. And obviously there's a time and a place for structure and for tracking macros for everyone. Um, I think it's a great tool. I think if it doesn't affect you mentally, it's amazing and it will help you see great results. But personally for me, I'm not in a place right now where that's going to work for me. So I need to take a step back. I hope you guys are excited to come along on this journey for me. I hope this helps one of you, if, if this helps one person out there at all, it'll all be worth it. I'm not just saying that because that's like a thing that people say. I really mean this um, because it's, it's it's just too much to leave on your heart to think about food and working out every hour of the day. And that's kind of what it's gone to for me. So that is kind of like a little mini fitness journey overview um, for me. Um, and yeah, that was video number one. I'm going to try and 
film a few more coming up here to get you guys caught up with like the practices that I'm doing, especially because we're on a quarantine right now. So hopefully some of you guys can incorporate some of this into your routine if you feel like you're struggling with some of the things, same things as well. Uh, if you guys uh, have any feedback, questions, concerns, anything you guys want me to address in the coming videos, if you appreciated me talking about this or if you're excited for the series, please let me know down below. If you could please, please, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. It would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for joining in and I'm super excited to get going with the series. Bye. Bye.